In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to wish you all a blessed and happy Thanksgiving weekend. I hope you all got to enjoy the holiday with your family as much as you could. I know we're not living normal ways these days. It's only a few, year, a few months ago that we were able to gather with our families and extended families, and then suddenly, now we're all treated as shut-ins. Who could have imagined this rapid change? It is, I think, that this type of abrupt change in our lives, it's like a sudden jolt, where one day we are traveling and gathering, and then suddenly we cannot. So I want us to contemplate on this aspect of our life today, from the perspective of today's gospel. Today's gospel relates to us a parable, and it's uh, not a parable, but a real event that took place. A rich man comes and asks Jesus how he can inherit eternal life. Jesus responds by telling him, do the commandments, and he lists some of them. The rich man says, I have done and observed all these commandments since my youth. What else can I do? And then Jesus tells him to go sell all that he has and come follow him. Of course, the rich man, being rich and with many possessions, found that hard to do. So he went away sad. And then Jesus, noticing that, says that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. But then he also adds, what is impossible with man is possible with God. So I want to draw the contrast here for a second between the other people that had come to Jesus in the gospel and this man. We have seen sick people, blind, leprous, demon-possessed, women with the flow of blood, or women bent down for 18 years, paralyzed. They all come to Jesus and they all live well, cured, justified, and joyous. But this man comes to him healthy, rich, probably well-educated. He has all what the world could offer him, and he leaves sad and unjustified. So what is the problem here? No doubt this man was missing something in his life. He was not fully content with what he had. Although he had a lot, he did not experience the joy that he was expecting from all the possessions that he had, even from the all, all the good that he was doing. Because if he was living a good life, if he was following all the commandments since his youth, he was probably living a good life. So you see, he was interested in eternal life, so he started on the path of what he and probably his parents thought would lead to eternal life. And that path meant get educated, learn the commandments and do them, be respectful, and also live a good and comfortable life, gather wealth and power as you can in this world. Do not find yourself needing anyone else. Be independent. But do good deeds, help the poor, assist in the social causes that help lift up other people, help the oppressed. These are all noble and worthy notions to live by. And this man did them, but he was not content. He was not satisfied. When he came to Jesus, he did come to him in a similar fashion to the blind man and the paralyzed. He was missing something. He was less lacking of good and normal health. The difference is that blindness and being paralyzed are visible symptoms. But not being content, not being satisfied, is not a visible symptom. He was asymptomatic. Many times we find ourselves in the same state as this rich man. We plan, we forecast, and we go about chasing after something that we think will bring us joy. It could be a career path, a larger house, a degree in college, number of followers on Instagram, whatever it is, we go for it. And when we obtain it, we might feel a bit joyous for a few seconds or hours or maybe days. But then we fall back into a state that is similar to this rich man's state. I call the state the now what state. I have achieved what I had planned on achieving, now what should I do? Many of us would then sit, set higher goals and go after them. But sometimes we get to experience this jolt, this abrupt change in our life, like the one we are experiencing right now with the spread of COVID-19. Sometimes this jolt might come 
in a more personal form, like a disease or the death of someone dear to us or an accident. However, this jolt comes, its purpose is to wake us up, to make us take a pause and try to consider how to answer the question, now what? Do we continue on the same path, the path of more achievements, more goals to go after? Or do we try something different? Like asking God, what should we do to inherit eternal life? See, this guy in today's gospel can be imagined coming to Jesus in two different ways. The first way is this pompous pride person, A-type personality. He knows it all. He has learned and achieved all the commandments since his youth. He has gathered riches, and he has come in a way that is challenging to Christ. In this way, we could imagine his question to Christ be like, tell me, Jesus Christ, do you think I deserve eternal heaven, eternal life, because of all I have achieved? Tell me, what else do you think I'm missing? Or the second way that we can imagine this guy coming to Christ is someone who has been in search of eternal life. He has done all that the law has told him to do. He has learned the commandments and done them. He has lived a good life. He comes to Jesus asking him, God, please tell me what else do I need to do? Because, because all this is not getting me anywhere. I feel miserable. I am in despair. How can I get eternal life, eternal joy? We all come to Christ from both of these two approaches sometime in our lives. Sometimes we achieve a lot and feel prideful. Sometimes no matter what we achieve, we feel miserable. But what is important is that in both ways, we have to go to Christ and ask the question. Christ will receive both ways. That is why in this gospel of today, we do not read too much about the mood the rich man was portrayed in. It can be in either of those two moods. But no matter what, Christ will receive us. And not only that, he will also provide an answer. Now, what is the answer? The answer has so many layers. I had mentioned before that reading the gospel is not simple. You have to peel through it like the onion. Each layer has so many meanings. But I want us to focus on one meaning today that is relevant to the season of thanksgiving that we are living in. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor. That is the answer that Jesus gave. In a way, Jesus is pointing the rich man to go interact with those that have less possessions than he has. When a spiritual father advises his spiritual son or daughter to give to the poor or go visit the sick or go help widow, a widowed person, the instruction has two purposes. The first purpose is the superficial meaning, which is go attend to their needs. But the second purpose, the second meaning of that type of instruction, which is what I want to focus on today, is be grateful to what you have in comparison to those who are poor, sick, or widowed. Go see how they are living as you help them and compare your life to them. In a sense, Jesus is telling this person, whether he came to him as a pride person or as a person seeking eternal joy and eternal life, did you express any gratitude to what you have? Go see how the poor are living and how grateful they are. Ex experience the gratitude that they have. Sometimes we thank by words, but we do not truly experience gratitude. How can we be bitter and complain and at the same time say thank you? How can we be prideful and covet more stuff and at the same time be thankful? How can we strive to be in control of everything and at the same time say thank you, Lord, for the stuff that you've given me? We have to be careful on how we throw out these thank yous. A person who experiences gratitude experiences it in all ways of their life, the good and the bad. Such a person is thankful for the sickness as well as the health, for the poverty as well as the riches, for the kindness as well as the bitterness of others towards them. That is what it means to be thankful in our church's perspective. And if we cultivate this type of experience by being thankful, then no matter what gets thrown at us in life, this worldly life, then we know it is for our benefit to, eternal, to inherit eternal life. Why do we know that? 
because we believe and we know that whatever is thrown at us is given from us to us from God and we know that he loves us we have faith in that so if we have faith we cannot but be thankful I will leave you with one statement from the book of Job we all know how he lived and how much he suffered the statement summarizes the state of a believing person and the attitude towards the good and the bad that could happen to us in this world. And the statement is as follows. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.